There are many ancient ruins that were not only beyond the capabilities of the claimed creators, but we postulate were simply re-inhabited, allowing the far more primitive and we feel far more recent inhabitants to flourish, developing these sanctuaries, often heavily fortified temples, to a point where they were able to leave their own mark upon these locations. An archaeological legacy left after the original creators of said sites were seemingly wiped out, with their own archaeological legacies simply washed away by the seas of our planet. These remnants have allowed academia to simply disregard the feat of engineering such incredibly large sites would have required, pinning such efforts to a more suitable candidate. After researching many such sites, backed up by the megalithic accomplishments that they still possess, one will begin to notice a pattern, an illogical and contradictory history for these groups, often invaded by a similarly capable and heavily studied group. The question is, why were a group who were apparently capable of building such a site so easily dominated by another which existed at the same era of history? One would have imagined that if they were indeed the builders of said sites, that they would have also been able to have created substantial defense systems, yet these are invariably absent from nearly all of these sites, with just the weather-resistant megaliths, and indeed the condition of the sites most probably very similar to how they are found today. And Chan Chan is no exception. Believed to have been constructed around 850 AD, based on archaeological finds, subsequently claimed as having been constructed by the Chimu. Although this explanation for the enormous site is conveniently absent any explanation as to how this society achieved such incredible feats of ancient engineering. It became the Chimur Empire's capital city, with an estimated population of 40 to 60,000 people when invaded by the Inca. After the Inca captured the Chamu around 1470 AD, Chan Chan was abandoned and by 1535 AD again became a ruin of history. Surviving into modern day and beyond, while no longer a teeming capital city, Chan Chan was still well known for its great riches and was consequently looted by the Spanish treasure hunters. With an indication of the creator's wealth seen in a 16th century list of items looted from a burial tomb, a treasure equivalent to 80,000 pesos of gold was recovered, nearly 5 million US dollars in gold. Incredibly intricate stone-cut engravings rest alongside massive fortified walls, and there is most likely many other tombs in the site, which not only predate this later re-inhabitation, but are probably also filled to the rafters with gold, an expression of these original creators' power, and again, contradictory to the Chamu's claim to such a site. Furthermore, Chan Chan is in a particularly arid section of the coastal desert of northern Peru, and due to the lack of rain in this area, the major source of non-salted water was in the form of rivers carrying surface runoff from the Andes. This runoff allowed for the control of land and water through irrigation systems. The city of Chan Chan spanned 20 square kilometers and had a dense urban center of 6 square kilometers. This contained extravagant ciudadelas, ciudadelas being the large architectural masterpieces which house plazas, storerooms, and burial platforms for the royals. Who were the original builders of Chan Chan? Were they, like we postulate, wiped out during a disaster? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. Thanks for watching. Drop a like, leave a comment. Please don't forget to subscribe our channel, Design Hysterics. Get more updated videos from now. Click on the bell button below to get notified. See you people in the next video. Till then, it's a bye from Design Hysterics team.